how important important silence is up against him. But, uh, you know, I would say I'm surprised that Navi didn't first pick the Ember Spirit, but then again, we know the success of Ember Spirit for them in the past, which has not been very good. Mm. At least I, I can recall at least one MLG TKO game where they tried to run Ember Spirit the very first time. That was a false. The, 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 the boss's first time as Ember Spirit. It did not go well for him at all. No. Well, in this game, I suppose we do have at least one bit of control during the team fight now, and uh, it means you're going to rush up that Enigma Blink Dagger. But I'm not. If he rushes the Blink, he's got the other, another problem. Ember Spirit's going to be able to stun him so easily, mm -hmm. and from out of range of the black hole. Ten so this almost feels like a greedy kind of lineup. It's a very we, like it's, it's a very different kind of greed too. Like there's a the greed with the channel, the Enchantress, where then you'll have like your jungle op options, and you'll be able to go time. from there. But with this kind of lineup, it's an enigma in the jungle, which basically means yeah. you need time to farm. You want to play passive. But if Power Rangers see this coming, they could grab, I don't know if they just want to go an, an extra and aggressive hero like Rubik, considering you have a channeling black hole anyway, um, and just go down south lane with an Ember Spirit, fight up against that lane and say, well, you guys want to play passive and greedy, we'll punish you for this. Remaining. Yeah, you know, this is um, another thing about this Navi draft so far is that they've got summons, right? They've got the double summons. Both of these heroes are very, very good at pushing. I am not entirely sure about how strong a minion push is going to be up against a Ember Spirit who just like yeah. slight of fist and clears through uh, all those squishy Eidolons that are very, very susceptible, have it's, a lot of gold it's, it's and it's are like susceptible a guaranteed to physical Vlad. damage. It's going to be a guaranteed Vlad to run for Quiller on one of these heroes if they want yeah. them to survive. Yeah, they, yeah. Once Ember Spirit has any real damage, especially if he, if they go for like a, a battle three build, which is something that we may see here because we now have a puck pickup. Mm -hmm. So unless that puck is off lane, uh, Ember Spirit is going to be our carry. Yeah, but you see how obvious that puck pick is. Like, is it, they take puck. It's like, well, we know you want Storm, so we don't care. Ten With a puck, we know we can remaining. control you. Ember Spirit then follow in behind you, and Venomance will always Five be able to control you remaining. too. So. Uh, I'm, like, I'm not saying through stuns or through things like that. It's like you don't want to make him burn out his mana. Reserve and from time. there, you move forward. So, yeah. Again, Power Rangers, their lineup is brilliant with their first two pickups. Uh, the question is still going to be what, what is Na'Vi's secondary Five support and cause? Remaining. Do we just go, uh, okay, Earthshake will be their selection. Another hero that requires a large amount of farm to really be massively effective. Yeah, like the, the Blink Dagger is the core mm -hmm. thing you search for. I was actually waiting for something more along the lines of like an SK to come up from Na'Vi, because then at least you got the option of throwing him in the jungle if Enigma wants to come out, or so on and so forth. So I thought maybe they would look down that. And then then you got, like, it's still, obviously, the stun's a little bit more nerfed, but you got something more in the team fight. You got a combination with the Enigma. But I'll be remaining. using the Earthshaker instead. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not really feeling this so far Five for Na'Vi, because, remaining. like you said, this is a very, very greedy support. And you already have Enigma, who's presumably going to be time. jungling. I mean, you look at Navi's first two picks. You go Furion offlane, Enigma jungle, and you normally make up for an Enigma by picking up something that is uh, a very, very strong laning presence here. It's your Crystal Mains, Venomancer, those kind of heroes mm -hmm. that basically uh, have such overwhelming control in the lane that they make up for the fact that they're the only support there. Here, Navi, they pick up an Earthshaker. You may be left with three different solos here. Because with Enigma in the jungle and Earthshaker, who normally you pick up Earthshaker, the first couple levels you try and do that really obnoxious um, blocking. Yeah. Right? And they are on the Radiant side, so, you know, that they're, they're going to be able to block that mid, pull it into the Ancients, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So you may see three different souls here. They, that is like the epitome of a, a greedy, greedy draft. That would be full greed, though. And that pull isn't really as... It's not really that easy to, to, to pull up. Like, pun was not intended on words, but... Yeah, I, I, I would, I would doubt they'd be able to do such a thing. In this game, I'd almost say like Ursula becomes a babysitter for the offlane, just to make sure he's okay. But I, I want to see Power Rangers go full on aggressive here. There's just too many great things to take from them. The VS was banned out as well. That would have been a, again, another one of those Power Rangers. Let's go into an aggressive tri lane kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but okay, Ember Spirit versus Prophet. Not like that matchup. Batrider versus Prophet. Ah, I'm liking a lot better. And then you're able to go on your off lane. You got to jump an initiator too. And with the Firefly Vision, there's going to be nowhere that Ninja's Prophet can hide if he gets caught out just a little bit too far behind the lines. 
And he's always going to be there with the TPs because his split push is like the most important thing right now. Because you know, if you're going to have Ember Spirit, he can jump everywhere across the map. This hero is so easily, easy to abuse position wise. And if Power Rangers get Ten one more hero that can the sanitizes nicely um, with the Ember Spirit, because it's just a support hero Five we're missing right now, uh, yeah. then we have the killing potential, we have the initiation yeah. potential with a puck and the Batrider, and now if you're going to try and do back. this with a Weaver. Yeah, you already have a Puck and a Batrider. Both are good counters to a Weaver. However... And they're not going to worry about the Enigma anyway, because they're like, oh, Enigma Ember Spirit will just take care of him until he gets a BKB. At which point, Batrider has to be on the job. Right. Uh, Na'Vi do have a lot of counter initiation. Both the Earthshaker and the Enigma are known for being able to not just be strong initiators, but oftentimes stronger Navi's at counter initiating when the, the chaos of a team fight occurs. So when Batrider jumps in, they do have something to be able to respond to that. Mm -hmm. uh, however, Batrider and Puck, I mean, in, especially in these early skirmishes, they should be excellent counters to Weaver, especially given how, how squishy he is. So if you remaining. don't pick up that fast Lincolns on Weaver, he's going to have a lot of issues. And even once he does have that fast Lincolns, he's still exposed to the puck silence, right? So I Power Rangers, I really like their draft so far, and I have no idea what Navi are going to pick up here as their last pick to really give Navi's me a lot more control. Now, I expected Power Rangers here to grab a Blink Dagger hero. However, Disruptor is like... He works the He's the way. opposite side of a, yeah. of a Blink Dagger in that uh, he doesn't have to jump in, but he pulls people back to you. The new item, the Pull Dagger. Yeah. That's all about right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So even more control afforded to them, even more counters to Enigma, to Weaver. Yeah. Even Nature's Stalker. Prophet. Night Stalker. Okay, now... That is a big playmaking hero that can snowball pretty heavily. That okay, I can see how that hero can be. That changes up their lineup a little bit more, and I and a, I favor Navi's lineup a little bit more than before. But it's still uh, there's so much riding on Dendi right now. It's, it's, he does it's not very, snowball. It's over. very reliant on him getting a good start. Because if yeah. he doesn't, then the Gale's still going to slow him down. He's always normally going to get glimpsed back anyway. Like, no matter, like, even when he gets the BKB up and running, if he starts triggering off BKB just to avoid a glimpse, then things aren't really going to be 100% right for them. So, uh, yeah, they're already looking pretty damn good as far as, like, PR's drafting goes. Night Stalker, I don't really see a massive problem with PR being able to control him mm -hmm. uh, until he gets big. Well, okay, there, there is one thing about Night Stalker is that the, the really early, like, 15 to 25-minute mark... Night Stalker is actually going to be really effective versus Venomancer and Disruptor. Those are two supports that don't have, like, a, a really immediate control, right? Yep. So Night Stalker gets in there, gets on them, quickly dies. He's got a silence to be able to go up against Ember Spirit. That's mm -hmm. always welcome. And he's also very, very strong against Puck in lane because he's got that nuke that he just spams out. He gets a fast bottle. Um, he's going to be able to clear himself a lot of room against that Puck and should be able to farm up decently. So I, I, I think... I can see where the pick is going, and I think it's a strong pick, but like I was saying earlier, I just don't see any fifth pick hero being uh, good enough to really change my mind about Navi's draft. Now, they have a lot of big playmaking heroes with, with uh, Enigma and all those sort of things that can definitely change around a big advantage that I think PR will build. Mm -hmm. But uh, in, in general, I think the Power Rangers, if they play just as well as they did in game one, I think they've countered Navi's draft uh, really, really well. It's... The question goes back to, for me, the biggest question about Power Rangers draft is how well will Ember Spirit carry really work? Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a huge question as well. But I think it's an easy question to answer bloody well. <laughs> I just didn't get so much space. I, the only thing I'm not sure about is if PR really actually want to go aggro try. Like, that's where my question is right now. Because if they go aggro try, they ensure the Ember Spirit gets farm. Uh, I, mean, I mean, if they go safe lane... Then they ensure the Ember Spirit gets farm, mm -hmm. and that may just be worth it for them. But if they go aggro try, they might be able to pick off a lot of kills and get a lot of momentum behind themselves. And then you leave J4 to do his thing up against Nature's Prophet on the top lane. So that's okay. But they're actually going to have Cheshire Cat running out with a Bottle Rush build. So he's going to be playing the mid solo Ember Spirit, which puts okay. J4 up on the top lane as a Bat Rider. And then Moon will be joining Universe style. Uh, the off lane is the puck with FNG as well as ZXC. So this is the lanes the PR will attempt. 
and then it will just be the standard stuff out from Navi. Say Flane, Havorst, Weaver, Urshay, Hakura, babysitting him, Puppy on the Enigma. Then we have Dendi as the uh, mid-solo Night Stalker, and Funic taking his Nature's Prophet. I believe they just want to get Vision. I, I don't know how really... Because yeah, the Amber Spirit aggressive trying lane wouldn't work against a Weaver. So I, I'm not for that. I just really thought they were going to go with a defensive try lane, put Batrider in the off lane, have him farm up. But apparently they really want him to get that blink dagger. Oh, Puppy. He's going to cut through the tree line in a moment. The nice Fisher is split them. FNG's locked in a corner right now with Denny. In fact, they locked him in the tree line almost. Kuro couldn't keep the contain there. But the Gale level 1 is not going to do anything. First blood goes the way of Na'Vi. And they're going to get through with more. Havos will pick up an XC inside the lane. And now aggressive try line goes horrible, horribly, 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 horribly wrong. They were trying to get him there to block up all of Enigma's camps. That was the yeah. goal, and it's the goal has failed. The goal, if they were, if they really wanted to do that, that should have been on Puck. That should have been Puck grabbing illusory orb immediately, them giving him the wards, and him just illusory orbing and and getting into the enemy jungle as fast as possible, like you see, like Weavers and and Furions do very very early on but uh that was a really really slow rotation from them yeah and now they actually have to smoke up just to get up their vision because otherwise they're gonna lose however the one good thing about this matchup though is that while the aggressive tri lane is questionable the mid matchup is really good for power rangers yeah Denny doesn't want to get in close to farm up, but in fact, they're already looking to capitalize on this. They know Denny got the got the uh, the kill, which means he got a very, very early bottle. But he's already used his void, being very over-aggressive, Cheshire Cat. They've got to be able to connect this Gale, and they oh, got it. Wow. Thunderstrike will connect to Cheshire Cat, just backing up because he knew the second void was coming. I think he overestimated the damage from that one. And Denny attacks that pill, and then just fists Denny into the earth. That's perfect, because uh, the, the big opening for Dendi was level 1 and 2, where his nuke would kill Flame Guard, because it's only 50 magic absorb at level 1. Yep. Once he gets to level 3, though, this lane's going to get a lot harder for Dendi, and then level 5, this lane's pretty much impossible. Melee versus melee is usually, uh, in fact, it's always guaranteed that Ember Spirit will win that lane, because uh, Flame Guard is just so strong. There's very, very few melees I can think about that can really contest it, and Night Stalker could be one if he really pushes his, pushes his advantage at level 1, but... Power Rangers have just beautifully countered that with a good smoke. Mm -hmm. Like how two uh, Kuro was trying to pull through, got half of his experience just leached out. But at the same time, Maria's not getting anything on this bottom lane. Like if you expect him to get CS up against a Weaver like a Vorst, a Vorst just be completely over aggressive on this bottom lane. Just underneath Moon all the time while in the middle lane, Dendi, actually going full out on Cheshire Cat. Brings him down pretty damn low. I'm hearing a glimpse right now. And I think it's trying to keep Puppy away from him so the Malifa sun won't go. Uh, middle lane, though, one quick fist on Denny, and FNG's rotated in. Remember, there's uh, actually there's no mana for a void. He's got two one charges up his sleeve, but Prophet looking to TP in, too. He wants to get a snipe off on Cheshire Cat, but it ends up cancelling it at the end of the day. Staying up on top lane to battle up against J4. Yeah, Cheshire Cat, I think this is a really greedy build from him. He went at level three, a level of Searing Chains instead of getting that second level of Flame Guard. I think that was really necessary for him. That's a very, very greedy build. Ooh, ZXC. Denny's on the email right now on the middle lane. Kuro's going to love the fidget, but the Gale connects on both Kuro as well as Denny. Puppy's going to come into Malibus on the Ember Spirit. Already fists him up, and Dendi, he'll actually end up going down right now. Cheshire Cat are looking too healthy. The attack from the conversion, oh. not enough. 20 light points, and the wall from ZXC really had Na'Vi worried they were overcommitting themselves here. As um, <laughs> Prophet... From behind. Yeah. Easy snipe out kill. Double kill for him because he also grabbed the Ember Spirit as he was running away. And now he's coming in for the Disruptor. Koro, the attack from the tower, not enough to kill him. He's had a 15 line points and 8 mana. That's sticking to the end. The wall comes up not fast enough though. So Funic running away. Ember Spirit's right behind him though. So he won't be able to just sprout up and keep Cheshire Cat away. But puts up already the shield. Is Funic thinking about denying himself off to the Wild Wings? I think he's considering it. The support coming in from Puppy, Cheshire Cat, Malibu stunned up. Denny's going to also arrive. There's your first Sprout. They hit him from range into a void, and Cheshire Cat's overcommitted himself. Bottling it up, the Prophet will take another kill. That's three in a row there for Funic. Power Rangers just kind of falling apart right now. I, they, they couldn't really afford, like, they had a good rotation early. 
but then they just got really, really greedy with that. They completely forgot about the fact that Thurion can come in at any point in time, and that double kill was just huge. Now Na'Vi have such a big advantage, because already Moon was having a tough time bottom, and feeding the Furion is going to be great, because he was... Uh, he didn't exactly want to sit in lane against Batrider the whole entire time. So now it's going to be up to J4 to try and pick up that fast blink dagger and kind of change the momentum of this fight. But honestly, this is a great start. Exactly what Na'Vi needed. Early kills for Night Stalker and uh, just kind of shortening out this laning phase for him. Yeah. The crazy thing is, it's like, it's only kills for Night Stalker. One, but obviously it's still something. But it's uh, the fact that we are here in nighttime now. Mm -hmm. So the nighttime transition comes in with Dendi already up at level five, which... Obviously, he, he got a very good start, considering he already got himself a kill at the start and going into the bottle and all that kind of jazz. But it's a transition, they just want to keep going. Prophet TP's in, and they found the Disruptor. The wall will go up. ES is waiting on the fish of the glimpse. Well, Funny had been there long enough, but he wasn't taken back. And now they just move over to FNG. Dendi, Void, he needs vision around the corner. Gets the vision. Void out quick. Funny will actually take the double kill from this one. Cheshire Cat still trying to bail up. Batrider comes in, but Malavus Stun's going to keep him away. He's got a line of two possibility, but with Fate boots on Funnick. He's almost able to run, outrun J4, but unfortunately for him, there is, of course, that wonderful thing. Is it Nile? No. Uh, Ember Spirit ensures that one. Uh, there's a wonderful thing called Sticky Napalm. But they take so long just running off the Prophet. It's great, because it's 620 gold going the way of Ember Spirit because of that kill. But they take some decent damage to the Tier 1 tower, and Mavor's still farming on bottom lane. Yeah, this was, it was really, really important for Ember Spirit to stay the same level as Night Stalker. Because you look at this matchup, when he has level 3, he gets 200 Magic Absorb from his Flame Guard. Which means he can tank a nuke and still have his, his Flame Guard up. And then at level 5, he gets even more. Staying ahead of Dendi's nukes was really important. But now that Dendi has a level advantage on him, he just one Flame Guard, he clears through that with his level 3 boy. 255 damage is uh, just kind of wrecking Shishir Cat. But because of that kill on Furion, it just got him back into his lane. Mm. Well, he's going to try and keep it, man. Look at him run for that bottom lane. It moves faster than Ember Spirit, but he'll have to avoid him if he wants to reach that regen rune in time, which he will not. And then he doesn't really have much more than this. In fact, he's going to have to avoid, but his movement speed won't save him. That one last attack gets rid of Dendi, and, uh, well, that was a very hopeful run for the rune. Yeah, I'm not sure He had sure vision, too, because the Observer, the Observer Ward was here. He saw yeah. everything, clearly. Warriors of the wood. I don't know, but Shishir Cat wants to really get more aggressive on this. Top lane. Yeah. And that's who he's going for. He's going to try and drag on Funnick. So there's your first stun with the chains. And now he's still got this in three seconds time. He's got Fist dragging him back. Then he will join the top lane. J4 tanking up the tower the entire time. He's getting up the hill, but he'll still go down. Then he will take the solo XP from that. Void's available again. Still three bottle charges also available for Denny. It just beats into Cheshire Cat. While Enigma has in fact killed off the puck. Is that it? Yeah, it was a black hole commitment on the bottom lane. Bottom tower is under so attack. Black Hole, Time Lapse was used. Another There's not enough mana for another Fissure on bottom lane, but they're, t they're actually TPing in the Prophet. Parkball back to try and fight this bottom lane. FNG's already out of mana now. That guy was his last thing he gave to this bottom lane. And a boss wants a kill. Sprout on oh, wow. Moon. They need the Fissure. It will connect. Moon able to face it. Manifest done as well. Moon's dead. Puck, let off the Dream Call before death. They both will take the stun because they both want to move away. Remember, the TP delay is still there from the previous TP, but Ember Spirit jumps down. Funnick into the corner. He's got no other real choice but to TP himself out. There's the chain. Holds him there. Havorce can have some time, though, to dish out some damage. No time limits available, so he won't overextend himself. Meanwhile, up on top lane, Dendi pushing a tier one tower. Top tower is under yeah, I really tower. like uh, Dendi's really early face boots here. Was a, a very, very smart idea by him. He knows he needs that physical damage uh, very, very early on, and this will allow him to be able to put in a lot of pressure on a lot of these supports, even if it's daytime. Yeah. So he now picks up the, these early items, now picking up an urn and those sort of things. So he has himself enough sustain. He's going to buy him buy his teammates a lot of room. And Davi are actually already doing a very, very good job farming up well on their supports. Right now, it's eight minutes in. You have a level seven Enigma and uh, Earthshaker, who's been sharing a lot of this experience, is at level five. That's very, very impressive because Earthshaker is not a hero 
known for being able to pick up a lot of levels early on but uh, they did a good job pulling they did a good job farming up the jungle and that is one big advantage of an enigma is if that you're willing if you're willing to share your experience enigma is actually one of the, the the fastest junglers out there so if he can share that experience with a support that is a little bit greedy like an earth shaker mm -hmm. as long as you're uninterrupted in the laning phase you can actually j get way far out ahead um way more than normal yeah uh you're talking about levels man that venom answer is really really low i mean <laughs> Just yeah. watching him. He's, he's hovering around the mid lane trying to be useful, but he's basically got a 1 1 1 build. It's not useful for anybody. In fact, just because um, like Gale is used as a dot effect, even if it does no damage, it just adds even more possibilities for PR to not get an advantage during a fight. Yeah. And so you can actually have denies go down even though you're not doing any damage. Yeah. So he, he, needs, he needs a second level in this. And if he doesn't get a second level up in the Gale, he needs the points up in the ward, so then they can hold towers, they can hold positions. Even if it just means you like you just put a couple of wards up here and you just start pulling, even with level one wards, it could be enough. You gotta find those levels on a Venomancer. You can't have under leveled supports in this game. Night Stalker will just eat them completely. Every single time. And not to mention him, Nature's Prophet. We kind of forget a little bit about Funic. I say forget, he's been in almost every single fight. But he's about to crack level eight. And he basically has almost enough for a hand of Minus. And with this camp right now, he will have enough for a hand of Minus. This is a little bit later than I was probably expecting, but for someone with three deaths to his name, it's basically got six kills to balance it out. But still, ten minutes in will be his hand of Minus, or roughly that. Yeah, and with an early mech up, their summons push is actually going to be really, really dangerous. Um, because the mech, if they could time it right... Pulling those creeps up to full health after a puck orb or something like that, they won't be able to just puck orb and slide a fist and clear through all of those minions. So they're actually going to be able to take a lot of tier one and tier two towers, I think, off of this. And this means a faster BKB for Havos. It looks like that's what he's going to be going. He would love to go Lincolns normally, but not only do you have the puck silence, but that last pick from Power Rangers, the disruptor, uh, you have to go BKB against that. It, you just can't. You just can't consider a Lincolns because those two AoE silences will completely counter you. Uh, a missed call came out, and Avos has basically backed up the entire way. They saw him for a moment, Power Rangers. Four men smoked up, trying to come for a gank. Now, Moon is still quite visible up on the top lane, but Navi realized the problem. Then Avos, well, maybe doesn't realize it enough. Dragged back, locked inside the silence, and Ember Spirit will take the kill on him. But that's a four-man smoke. They pick up a force. That's a good thing for them. But he also spent his money before he died. So he has the Ogre Club right now over on the Courier Plus and new TP scroll. Yep, so not a whole lot of gold loss for him. But uh, I still think that the majority is going to be Navi pushing in during nighttime with Dendi being really, really aggressive. Has that big advantage. And then from there, they're going to turn that into a lot of Tier 1 towers. That's where their gold's going to come out for Havos. So even if they shut him down now, uh, you're going to find just all of a sudden like 2,000 gold within the space of three minutes is going to go the way of, uh, of Havos due to all these towers going down. We already have the first one, and we're right about to kick into nighttime. Yeah. Good time for rotations for Navi. And PR, you're right, they need to do so much more damage. These towers need to drop. But there's a lot of momentum up on top lane still, and someone's going to go up there and deal with it, even if it's just the trees and the conversions. And because of that, Dendi, look, you're just making a beeline. You can be careful, though, because all the PR are five-manned. They're five-manned behind their tier one, almost on their tier two tower in the middle lane, apart from Cheshire Cat. He's got a haste rune, so it's understandable, his uh, confidence. But they're not showing themselves up on the top. And because of this, like, they, I think they're worried that Na'Vi was still up here and looking to initiate. Yeah. But they've lost half of the life points out of this top tower because they, they didn't know. There's no vision around that point. They see now Denny's in mid lane because he walked past the Observer Ward that's watching the top river. But they wasted a lot of time. Yeah, they still think someone's around here. Like, J4 and ZXE are just kind of sitting there because they're so scared of, of nighttime because they fed Dendi so many... Uh, early kills getting him a lot of early experience he may not have had a whole lot of gold because he didn't get the last hits on the kills but he was part of those kills which gave him that experience advantage what fisher gotta go right now and he locks oh. them all in position a force will come up there's a glimpse it's dragging him back the wall into the ulti but bat rider jumps in deeper he's dragging a force into this but they're focusing on three different targets at once and then in comes funnick 
Kuro drops the Echo Slam. It's a double kill right now for Funning. Kuro will be the sacrificial lamb in this one. Moon able to TP himself away to safety, but J4 playing with his Firefly. Funnick throws the ulti. They need just a little bit of vision. There it is. Hit, bomb, done, triple kill. Nine for three on Funnick. Pretty sure they're, they're lucky, they're lucky they waited for him to come back. But Poppy, Malifus done. He's so low on life. And then the ulti, not, no, the spirit not fast enough. Four heroes lost in total for the price of an Earthshaker, who initially looked like he was going to be the one to pop. Yeah, Power Rangers, uh, some misplays in middle, I think, cost them this game. Because Na'Vi are pretty much looking to just snowball from here. Uh, that is the whole entire snowball lineup. If you make those early mistakes, uh, you're going to lose so much gold uh, because... They have already that far ahead, 10,000 gold ahead. And we are just now having the tier one tower drop in middle. We're gonna have the top tier two dropping and that they won't stop there. Oh, Prophet. He's able to TP again though. Ah, oh, no, he's not. With the puck right on top of him, there's no way out of that. 424 gold for ending the spree. FNG not looking too healthy after all this. But up on top lane, yeah, J4 Malava stunned up. And of course, just Shikuchi threw him. Actually, no, he won't. He used Shikuchi for the movement speed to then attack him. But there's a lot more support coming up. Denny with the DD rune. Silence, Void, Fissure. He can hit over the top of that rock wall. And the Venomancer did go down too. So uh, Weaver getting one. Moon, one extra Void. Double kill for Dendi. Power Rangers really are just getting nailed. And uh, they at least get one collateral kill. Cheshire Cat able to grab the Enigma up on the top lane. Yeah, I really thought I was looking at this with the Ember Spirit as a one. I was expecting him to be able to pick up an early Battle Fury. And then from there, the Sleight of Fist uh, spam would be able to stop a lot of these pushes. However, running him middle and making some, some big mistakes there uh, cost them the only advantage that they were supposed to, which was Ember Spirit was supposed to be a good hero to kind of uh, key, control Dendi early on. Yeah. With his Flame Guard spam, just being able to kind of push Dendi out of lane, make sure he doesn't get an early upgraded boots earned, those kind of items that allow you to it, snowball. It, it didn't help, too, that Dendi had, had the bottle from, like, from the first wave. Yeah. Because of those exactly. first two kills on my lane. It just wasn't the fact that, like, PR's across the tri lane went down because... It was, it was meant to be a control lane. It was meant to keep a Vorse off his farm as well. Both these lanes, like mid and bottom, were all about the control. But they ended up feeding kills and making both Funic as well as Dendi stronger because they're the two heroes that got the kills. Mm -hmm. So they the top lane became almost Funic straight, straight from the get-go. And same with Dendi. All they had to do was just play even slightly well or have PR make a mistake and the advantage was going to be theirs. The Fireflies at least slowed them down here on the bottom lane, but... That Firefly is almost expended. And Danny, I think he's finally going to find his seat. Nope, around the corner. He can't see him in the fog of war. But someone is rather deep. And there's Cheshire Cat. Silence. Voided. Slowed. Disrupt will throw the ulti out. But so with the Midnight Pulse. Layer on layer. A quick jump away. There's your own charge coming out, in fact, from ZXC. Trying to keep Cheshire Cat alive. Denny, Void, one more attack. There he goes. Mega kill streak for him. And now, glimpsing back, there is a fissure there. So Denny will have to run, but luckily for him, it is still night time. And Avorce is smack bang on the front line. Same with Funnick. Teep in a little bit deeper. Maybe a little bit too deep. The Lanasu is on top of him, but Avorce just keeps running through. Triple kill for him. And, uh, well, there will be a double kill for J4. It's the Firefly that burns him down. And J4, well, <laughs> buybacks into the black hole from Puppy. One hole to rule them all for you. Puppy wants to TPA. He's got no mana left right now, so he'll get our way to safety. Let Dendi run away. Let Avorce run away. Dendi actually might be in a little bit of trouble right now. There's no Dream Coil, but Avorce comes back in to fight. FNG. It really looked like they were just trying to retreat out then, but Na'Vi realized the two heroes they've got, they can still chase it down, but night time is over. Moon's been earned up, and Dendi's going to run. He doesn't have ulti available. The BKB is still on cooldown. The Glimpse is actually going to drag him back up into the wall. So Denny will go down 871, 817 gold going the way of the Ember Spirit for that kill. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, GG. Yeah, this is completely over. They just wanted to be able to pick off Dendi once. But yeah, the power of a Night Stalker. That, that fifth pick, I wasn't really sure about it, but uh, it did exactly what it needed to do. It snowballed really, really heavily. Um, Power Rangers with their laning choices, not prioritizing Puck's farm a little bit more, allowing him to be middle where he still would have had to go up a night stalker and that's not great but early levels a faster blink dagger could have made the difference ember spirit with more i mean he has no damage items you look at him he's got face boots he doesn't even have the drums he was building into I love he, yeah he's he's so far behind